Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you a look that I've been wearing a lot lately and it's just featured around kind of purpley lilac eyeshadow colors and then like a peachy nude lip and cheek. So that's what we're doing today. So let's just get started. I'm going to use the Cover FX Illuminating Primer. I have used this a couple times and I really like it obviously because I love anything that's illuminating or dewy. For foundation, I'm going to use these two. I'm going to use the NARS Sheer Glow, and I have it in shade Gobi, and then the Custom Cover Drops from Cover FX, and I have shade N10, which is the neutral undertone. I also have tried the, the G20, so Golden 20, and it was just a tad too dark, so I'm going to give this one a try. I haven't used this color yet, but... I'm sure it will work just fine mixed with this one because this is quite yellow based. I am going to work off a palette which is this is just a Bath and Body Works three wick candle lid because I have been going overboard with foundation. I've just been pumping out one pump and then whatever one pump or one drop is in this case it's just too much and less is always more with makeup. You can always add more. <laughs> so this is a dropper if you're not familiar with it. You probably are because it's been like blowing up on YouTube but it's just like a pure pigment from what I've heard and you can mix it with anything you can mix it with moisturizer serum other foundations it's just gonna amp up the coverage and I find that it's a beautiful finish so I'm just gonna be working off off of this a little bit at a time just pressing that in my face and you guys will see the beautiful coverage this is Sedona lace 928 brush I just I really enjoy these brushes it's just so beautiful, the coverage. I like the NARS Sheer Glow. Oops. I like, I like the NARS Sheer Glow on its own. But sometimes I just like, you know, a little bit more coverage. These custom cover drops, I haven't, I haven't really mixed them with, I haven't mixed them with anything else, like moisturizer or serum, but I really want to see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to do some contouring now. Just really easy, subtle contouring. And I'm going to use these Smashbox ones, the step-by-step -step contour sticks. So I'm going to take that contour color. These aren't my favorite. I think that they're kind of overpriced for what you get because the highlight doesn't really do a lot for fair skin because it kind of matches your skin. But I do have them, and I like them enough to keep them. So, And they blend out really nice as well. You guys see that? It's a really unflattering angle. Just do it under the jawline. And then I'm going to take the bronzing one and just kind of go up here. And I think this bronzer color is really, it's really pretty. And I'm not going to use the highlight color because it, like I said, it just doesn't really do anything for my fair skin because it's my almost my skin tone. It, it might be a little bit darker than my actual skin tone, which is really crazy. So I'm just going to buff that in with the same brush. Make sure to take it up into the hairline so you don't have like a white line between your hairline and the face color. See how that just really nicely defines the face? I swear it slims down my face ever so slightly, which... I'm all about that life. <laughs> I decided I am going to take the highlight color and just maybe clean up a little bit here. But see, you guys can see like that's a little bit darker than my natural skin tone. So it doesn't really highlight. So hopefully they'll come out with lighter shades for us pale girls. Okay, so for under eyes, I'm going to be using something that everybody loves, I swear. But I just haven't, it hasn't worked for me. It's the Instant Age Rewind in the Brightening Shade from Maybelline. And I just don't feel like it's a lot of pigment. It doesn't really cover up like I want it to. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to take this Real Techniques Essential Foundation Brush to press that in and blend it out. I think it looks okay on camera, but I can still see my discoloration under the eyes. I'm going to use that NYX HD concealer in the color porcelain and I'm going to throw in a little bit of yellow. Before I set everything I'm going to put on my eye primer and I'm trying out this for the first time, the NYC City Proof 24 Hour Waterproof Eyeshadow and this is in the color, it's just a white color, Rockefeller Center Snowflake. 
So I always like to just take my finger and rub off excess product that is from the concealer or the foundation just so it doesn't get all built up and increase the chance of creasing. It's really sheer. I thought it would be like the Milk NYX Jumbo Pencil which is more opaque and more creamy but we will see. And it does have that little bit of shimmer in it too. It's a little bit tuggy, like it tugs at my eye a little bit. It's pretty, it's really subtle. I think it does an okay job of kind of adding a little bit of light up in the face. And now because Kathleen lights, <laughs> she used this in a recent video and I'm like, I have to have it. This is the Maybelline Fit Me powder. Like I always do before I put the powder on, I like to take the warmth of my finger and just kind of press in just in case anything already creased before I had the chance to set it. And you can do this after you set your powder. So if you like set, if you set your concealer with powder and then it does, oops, it does crease a little bit later, just go over it really gently and smooth it out and pat it out and that should put it in place for the day. Just lay down a nice layer by swirling it under there. I'm gonna switch over to a larger brush to set the rest of my face. This is a really nice powder. It's very, very sheer. Make sure to set down on your neck if you did apply that cream contour so it just doesn't really move anywhere. I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Natural Matte eyeshadow palette that looks like that but obviously I'm just gonna be using kind of these brown shades so any colors that are similar you can do it with. First I'm gonna go in with Heaven. I'm just gonna lay that down over the entire area just to help the other colors go on and blend easier like I always do. I usually never skip this step. It's an extra step. It's maybe not necessary but for me it just makes blending and the darker colors that I add just so much easier. Next, I'm taking the Lace Teddy and the Nude mixed together, putting that in the crease as kind of the transition color to help everything look more blended as you would with a crease color. Okay, I'm going to deepen up that crease a little bit. I'm going to take Cashmere Bunny and a little bit of Sexpresso, just so scandalous, just to deepen up that crease color. And just to ensure everything is super smooth, I'm taking this clean blending brush, uh, Dallium Tool 785. To me, this is the exact same thing as the MAC, what is it, 224 in the Sigma E40, but at a much more affordable price. Circular motion, light, medium pressure, you guys have all heard it before. Next I'm taking Daydreamer, which is this foiled eyeshadow by Makeup Geek on a flat shader brush, MAC 242 is what I'm using, and I'm just going to place that all over the lid. And I'm just kind of packing it on there quite a bit to really bring out the intensity of it. Next, on a more precise crease brush, this is Makeup Geek Soft Dome. I'm going in with this beauty right here. This is Masquerade. Oops, focus. Masquerade. It's also a foiled eyeshadow. And I'm just going to work that really softly in the crease and build it up a little bit. The key here is to just to get a little bit of pigment only. I'm just taking right the tip in there and then, of course, tap it off. And then just start right there and just softly, very, very soft. We're not, you know, you don't want to be up here like this, like you want to really hold your hand back on the brush like that so you get a really soft application all in the wrist right here. <laughs> and so most of that I'm trying to lay it down on the outer, por outer portion and then I will take it over a little bit once most of that has already been deposited down just to help blend it to the inner side. This brush is pretty awesome because that shape is pointed so it legit puts down that pigment and blends it almost all at the same time. You really don't have to do anything except for back and forth motions. On that same MAC 242 brush, I'm going to flip it over, use the other side, and I'm going to go in with this one. This is Whimsical. Now, I just want to place this right in the center of my eyelid, so I'm going to line it up with the iris, the colored part, and basically just, just like that. This is just going to make your eyes look a little bit wider, and not wider, but bigger, wide, more wide awake, I suppose you could say and just make them look bigger than they are. For eyeliner on the upper lash line, I'm going to do something kind of different than I usually do. I'm taking this Sigma Gel Eyeliner in Royally Striking. Look how pretty that is. I thought that'd be really fun. 
and then I'm taking my MAC 210 brush. So I just finished my liner and I'm not happy with how it turned out. It's just a little bit too choppy for my preference. A trick that you can do if you get this situation is just go in with a similar color that you use on your lash line. So I'm gonna go in with that, is that one Masquerade? I'm just gonna take a little angled brush. This is MAC 266. And I'm just gonna pick up that product and stamp it on over the gel liner. That will actually help it last longer and it will also help to kind of diffuse it so it just looks better trust me to finish up the eye look i'm gonna finish up the lower lash line i'm gonna take cashmere bunny and just smoke it out a little bit i'm taking it on the mac 213 and i'm just gonna take the tip of the brush just for a little bit of extra dimension under there i just don't feel complete without this step and then I'm taking a little, this is MAC 231, I'm using a lot of MAC brushes today. I'm going back in with that beautiful royal purple that's Masquerade, and I'm just going to put that on the outer part of my eye just to kind of bring the top eyelid colors down with the bottom and make it kind of well balanced. I'm going to connect the bottom there up with that little wing. Now I'm taking a clean Q-tip and very gently I'm just going to dry off my waterline. And then I'm going to go in with this pencil. This is the J-Cat Beauty Makeup of the Day Waterproof Slide On Pencil for Eyes. And this is in the color Violet. And for my lower lash line, I'm going to use this um, CoverGirl Lash Blast Fusion. It's purple. I have this in like a pile of mascaras that I need to use up. And I just don't really like it for my upper lash line. It just doesn't really do enough. And for a brow bone highlight and an inner corner highlight, I'm going to keep it matte. You could certainly use that first shade in the, the Naked or the Natural Eye Palette, this one here. But it's a cream and it just doesn't really make a huge difference on my pale skin. So pale skin girls, if you're looking for a matte, non-shimmery highlight, you're going to want to get Makeup Geek White Lies. It is just... It's perfect. It might be too stark if you're darker complected than me. If you're like medium or deeper, it might be really stark of a highlight. It's like the perfect white girl highlight or pale girl because it actually is a contrast to the white skin, to the pale skin. So I didn't want to do a shimmery highlight just because the eyes are pretty, pretty shimmery and foiled. And now for blush, I'm using this one. I haven't used it before, so I'm really excited. <laughs> This is the Essence Silky Touch Blush in the shade 50 Sweetheart. And it's just like that nudie peach color, which is what I'm going for. These are so affordable if you aren't familiar. They're like maybe $3 or so. And for lips, I have Jordania Easy Liner for Lips in Rose Crush. I'm just going to outline my lips with that, fill it in a little bit. And then over top is the Butter Lipstick from NYX in Fun Size. And I forgot to add a highlight, so I'm gonna finish off the look with a highlight. I'm using this e.l.f. Baked Blush. It's essentially a highlighter. It's pink-tastic. It's really beautiful. Pop that on the high points of my cheeks, my face. All right, guys, so that is the look. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys, as always, so very much for watching. A product list with links of everything that I use will be in the description box as usual. And I'll see you guys in my next video.